today we have heard so much about gandhi we have seen so many people working on the ideas that gandhi had thought about and uh, i'd like to share some of the um, stories that i have been sharing in many many schools and colleges uh, through visuals music and dance recently i had um, heard a talk by bhadra savai on gandhi in folklore and she had sung some and i thought uh, it would be very nice to put uh, that those songs together for this performance so i recorded the, those songs on my cell phone i sent it to naina shah of sarvodaya international tamil nadu chapter because i wanted a gujarati to sing it and uh, give it to us and uh, so those were sung by uh, naina's daughter in law sandra shah and uh, premnath of rukmini devi natak kshetra got those songs and uh, you know when uh, a folklore song is sung it has a different energy it has a different kind of uh, rhythm pattern that had to be fitted to a bharatanatyam uh, uh, dance group's pattern but a gujarati dance but the dance will come after i have shared a few visuals and i'm very very delighted that um, all these girls prem nath in the middle of extreme uh, stress of various kinds of uh, projects that he is having just rose up to the challenge and worked with these girls and got this dance put together for this program today so thank you anantu and ram ram of samanbaya thank you for uh, inviting us here we from the asima trust uh, who work in uh, bringing gandhi's ideas to school children to think about gandhi as an exciting person and not just uh, an old man with a stick uh, you know that is what people think and uh, rukmini devi natya kshetra and sarvodaya international tamil nadu chapter welcome you for this program i i know i can talk too much but i will uh, restrict myself and uh, give you this khadi uh, as self respect motive was something that gandhi gave us isn't it the pearly king accompanied by his son and daughter came to pay respects to the distinguished visitor in his domain gandhi greeted the costermonger royalties who offered him their best oranges take the orange yeah thank you thank you thank you why take only one i take two kill <laughs> the reason i took this clipping from the original mahatma um, documentary is uh, as a as a storytelling point you know 1931 gandhi goes to london as a representative of indians to discuss ideas of at least a dominion status uh, but you know there was no intention of giving any kind of uh, uh, freedom for indians now if there is a man who is asking who is a you know af- asking for freedom asking people to get away from his country and leave them alone do you think uh, the opponent would treat this person like this welcome him like this do you think a, a rebel would be treated like this welcomed like this why do you think it happened i asked this question from children studying in lkg to college students you know and adults why do you think something like this happened at the height of freedom struggle a man is asking for freedom and he is treated by his powerful opponent like this why why do you think i am not asking for the right answer i am saying why do you think 
this could have happened. Because of the values he carried, um, I'm, I'm coming to specifics now, you know. What specific thing would have brought in something like this? Because Gandhi always said, it is the, the doing and not the doer. You know, he said, hate the action but not the, uh, the person. And he said, I'd like to cut India off from the British Empire, but not from the British nation. Because nation is made of people, and people are the same wherever they are. People are the same wherever they are, whether they are in England or in India or in Pakistan or in Africa, wherever they are, people are the same as you and me. It's the policies that are different. You know, so it, I'd like to cut India off from the British nation, not from the British, sorry, British Empire, but not from the British nation. This is what he was saying. So people are our friends. This is the reason why there was negotiation with Gandhi as an equal. As an equal to, to talk about freedom for India. And of course, we have the talisman, everybody knows. Because whatever you are doing, he said, I'll give you a talisman. Think of the poorest. Whatever you are making a decision, think of the poorest person and how this will affect that person. And then make your decision. And it all began, we are all talking about uh, handmade things here. It all began in Champaran. Champaran is when uh, 1917, Gandhi has come to India uh, from South Africa. He has uh, already spent a little time in uh, Tagore Shantiniketan and then set up his Kocharab ashram and goes to Lucknow for the uh, conference. And there a young man called Rajkumar Shukla uh, comes to Gandhi and says, you must come to Champaran. Because in Champaran, we are having this great problem of having to grow indigo in one third of our land. And uh, so you have the legal brain, so please can you come and help us. Gandhi is very reluctant. He has just had done uh, Bharat Yatra because the, of the promise he had given to Gopal Krishna Gokhale that he will go all over India before speaking one word of politics before saying anything, opening his mouth. So he went all over India and traveled and then only, he was now ready to open his mouth. But Rajkumar Shukla is so insistent and uh, they go. On the way, they go to Rajendra Prasad's house in Patna. There they are mistaken for lower caste, class, caste people and they are not allowed into the kitchen. But uh, uh, Rajendra Prasad was not at home at that day, but he becomes a very uh, important disciple in Champaran. I know I have to watch and keep my storytelling short because I get excited and I keep on and on and on. Um, but, you know, what is very interesting is Gandhi's idea of organizing young minds. In Champaran, when he goes there and he has been asked to leave that place, etc., etc., all those are part of the history. He has asked young lawyers from very elitist families to come and go to every door and interview people. He had to make, they had to survey the whole, all the villages. 8,000 people were interviewed because Gandhi said, I don't know this dialect the Kaiti dialect of in that area. So please translate this for me. Go and talk to the people, find out what they want for themselves. And then come back and, and then I, there is that famous story of uh, Kasturba feeling uh, uh, very sad that the, the, a woman had only one uh, uh, cloth in her house, etc. And uh, that is when Gandhi says, what is the use of political freedom if we, people cannot live in dignity and self-respect? We must build self-respect. That can happen only when 
we try to do things ourselves. Keep clean. So one woman goes to Gandhi and says, what should I do? I don't know anything. What, how, what, how can I help you? He says, see those children playing there? Go and give them a bath. Comb their hair, he says. You will uh, do well. So she goes there, gets all these children, tries to comb their hair. You know, those women would uh, plaster their hair with wax and comb it very tight on their head. And she learned so much. Why? Why was this done? Etc. So she comes back to Gandhi and says, I learned so much. And he tells Kasturba to teach the women to cook nutritious food and hygienic food. Live, you can live simple. Yesterday Ram was uh, saying that you may live simple, but you must be tidy, clean, you know. Simple doesn't mean untidy. So he said, let's w start work on that. That is when self-respect movement began in India, you know. The, the whole thing of Swadeshi is to respect oneself and stand on one's own two legs. So Rajendra Prasad from a very uh, wealthy family becomes a disciple. He was about to give, be given judiciary post and he gives that up and becomes a writer for Gandhi, stenographer, you know, who goes and interviews all these village people and uh, write. All of them forgot about their upper caste. They went and ate in little huts uh, wherever they could. Um, so, what began in uh, what began in uh, Champaran, so the Bhadra Savai songs and the folklore is so amazing because word of mouth just travels. People didn't know who he was when he went to Champaran. By the time his Champaran activities were going on, folk people were singing about Gandhi in Gujarat. Can you imagine? Folk songs were being composed by Gandhi in Gujarat when, during Champaran time. Okay, so now uh, I invite uh, Premnath's Rukmini Devi Natyakshetra to perform Gujarati dance to Bhadra Savai's uh, singing um, given to us by Naina Shah's daughter-in-law Sandra Shah and sung by the members of Rukmini Devi Natyakshetra and danced by the disciples of Premnath. Good luck. 
The spinning wheel, Gandhi said, is a national necessity. Not on the clatter of arms, but on the reintroduction of the spinning wheel depends the economic and moral regeneration of India. While touring the country incessantly and tirelessly, Gandhi did not lose sight of India's gravest problem, poverty. India as a nation, he observed, can live and die only for the spinning wheel. When they look for a spinning wheel in the ashram, uh, they didn't know where to find the spinning wheels. So Gandhi gave this task to a lady called Gangubai Majumdar. And Gangubai Majumdar traveled all over to find a spinning wheel. Then she went to Bijapur in Baroda district. And there she found many of these uh, spinning wheels that were lying in disuse completely because nobody was using them. So when uh, she talked to the women why they were not uh, spinning, they sh she was told that they were not able to get ponies. Pony is the sli sliver, you know. And then uh, they said, no, who will take our yarn? So Gandhi said, let's get ponies and let's get these women to start spinning and uh, we will take the yarn. And so Ma she brought all these spinning wheels on a bullock cart to the ashram. And Maganlal Gandhi sat and worked on these spinning wheels to improve it. And then Gandhi kept on trying to see how that big spinning wheel can be made small and portable. You saw uh, Karnakaran showing so many spinning wheels there. And this is... This is mine. Uh, so he created uh, with some people the book charkha. There is also a box charkha and this is the book charkha. So the big charkha was converted into a small book charkha which can be taken around and spun. And um, some of the stories I have heard is that children and grandmothers would spin together at home and when they spun they felt that they were freedom fighters sitting at home and spinning was a way of fighting for freedom in those days so this kind of you know homogeneity of making everybody wear khadi as a rebellion now this was not a new idea it was uh, the Swadeshi idea was there since 1903. But then what do you do today? You know, I had gone to a school in Kottamangalam, Chettinad, and uh, a young boy came and told me, uh, ma'am, uh, you, you had come uh, last year and you had spoken about Gandhi and you showed us spinning wheel. I have made a spinning wheel, he told me. I said, wow, show me. And so he, I asked the headmaster to let him go home and bring it. And this is what he brought for me, Karupaya. Uh, he uh, took a small broken toy car he found on the street and he removed the uh, engine from there. He fixed it on a small plank and, uh, you know, from the trees you get those uh, uh, long um, um, uh, fruits with cotton in them sponge in them. He used that to spin. And uh, so he was spinning at home and he was creating sm some small things. And um, so, you know, one can think of how this idea can go forward with these kind of... Uh, uh, and uh, recently in uh, Salem, 
Meena Setu and her Golden Gate School and uh, Emerald Valley School, uh, who cleaned the Mokaneri Lake and all that, they have begun spinning, um, weaving with uh, plastic uh, um, milk packets. Uh, they are cutting and uh, They are creating bags and uh, other things from the uh, plastic that they are finding. So th there are many, many different kinds of ideas that are coming from the spinning and the weaving that is taking place. Gandhi landed on British soil with thoughts of the hard task ahead. I am here to vindicate the honor of India and to uphold truth as I see it for I believe it is the keystone of life. Now, uh, you know that famous story of going to Buckingham Camp Palace uh, with that cloth that he was wearing, the Khadi cloth. For him, he was representing the poor people of India and this was the way he was communicating through his clothing. He refused to take the train that was, you know, they had uh, uh, kept a, a special train for him to go in. He said, no, I want to go in the road. I want to see the uh, city. So he gets into a car and in that rainy day in London, not wearing socks and shoes, he was trying to prove that he mind over body. If the mind decides, it can endure. Isn't it? He was trying to prove that. Then he goes to Lancashire. Uh, he goes to the... La he, he and Andrews, they decide they want to go and meet the workers in the Lancashire mill who have lost their jobs because of uh, the depression and also the Swadeshi movement started in India because the biggest business the British had in India was the uh, Khadi, uh, sorry, uh, textile business. So Indians were, were buying cheap textiles that were made in uh, British mills and that was cheaper for them than making Khadi and wearing. As we know today, uh, the kind of, uh, the, the saris that uh, you can wear, they are very expensive naturally because of the kind of uh, production that is involved in the saris like this. So, people prefer something that can be maintained easily and cheaper, you know. So, people were buying British cloth and um, these people had lost their jobs and he was warned, if you go there, you might meet with hostility. But what happened? This is the kind of uh, welcome he got. You know, even in a uh, hostile situation, this is the kind of welcome he got. This is my favorite uh, part. I know many of you have seen it, but uh, there's this man leaning out of the window, uh, wanting to meet with Gandhi. Can anybody recognize him? I think somebody knows. Who could it be? Who could it be? Churchill. I'll sh when I show the next slide, you'll all gasp because you all know him very well. Charlie Chaplin had been uh, uh, excommunicated by Hollywood. Edgar Hoover was angry with him for making the kid. And uh, he had been uh, told that he cannot enter America again. Uh, after he had got into the ship, he received a letter from Hoover saying, you're, you, you're, you'll not be allowed to enter America again. So Gandhi want, you know, he wanted to meet with Gandhi and what Gandhi had to say. This is Charlie Chaplin meeting Gandhi. You don't believe it is him? Brilliant actor, brilliant makeup. Look at this face and this face. It's the same face. You know, 
and this meeting has given inputs to me into making one of the most iconic films in the world among the 100 best made films in the world can anybody guess what it is charlie chaplin makes a film when it was very dangerous to make that film yes i hear the great dictator he was laughing at hitler at a time when hitler was powerful okay and um, i have a small clipping from that film he makes it double cross not swastika small children what uh, proverb do you remember when you see this picture when the clipping you know tamil proverb what tamil proverb okay okay good yes and yes okay add something more yes Perasai perum nashtam. Perasai perum nashtam. So if you become too big, you are sure to burst at one time. You know? So be cautious, don't become too big. Is the... You know, um, we all know that the uh, stories tell us that the turning point in Gandhi's life was when... Uh, he was thrown out of the train in Peter Morrisburg station uh, in South Africa. We all know, think that that is the turning point in Gandhi's life. But Ramachandra Guha and I feel that this incident that I'm going to narrate now is the turning point in Gandhi's life. Because it was after this incident that Gandhi made a decision that he was going to work for the community and uh, uh, not be in in the family he takes the family into the community and creates the phoenix farm and all that what is this incidence um, people waiting in the harbor durban harbor gandhi had uh, come to india uh, once he realized that he was going to be in south africa for a long time he came back to India to take his wife and children back to South Africa. He left Harilal behind, the firstborn, and took um, the secondborn and a cousin and a nephew uh, and his wife to South Africa. They travelled in ship, but when he was in India, he published a book, blue pamphlet. In that, he had meted out, listed out all the... Uh, in injustices meted out to Indians in South Africa and uh, he had given interviews, he had gone and uh, met people. All this news had reached the white people in South Africa and they said Gandhi is trouble, when he comes we will teach him a lesson. So when the ship reached to South Africa, he also it describes this voyage very beautifully. He says, while they were going Suddenly there was a storm and the ship was going uh, topsy-turvy almost. And at that time all the screaming was the same. You couldn't uh, hear different gods. 
you know, you could not hear the names of different gods. It was the same screaming, everybody was screaming. You know, um, so whether they were Hindus or Muslims or Christians, it was the same screaming. Um, anyway, uh, once the ship reached Durban, they were not given permission to dock for 23 days. 23 days quarantine was given to this ship because, uh, you know, first of all, there were people waiting in the harbor to lynch Gandhi and they thought that the, these people were bringing plague. Not only that, they also did not want to welcome uh, immigrants who are going to take away their jobs. You know, politicians always play on fear. They'll take away your job. They'll take, you know, this is what is happening around the world, isn't it? So they thought this Indians will come and take away our land, our, uh, our uh, jobs, and uh, so we must not allow Indians to get down from the ship. So they uh, quarantined the ship for 23 days. And these guys are waiting in the harbor to lynch Gandhi. Um, a lawyer came to the ship and said, uh, um, that these guys are waiting outside and it's very dangerous. So uh, can Gandhi uh, get down later in the night with the other crew members covering him? Let other passengers get down now. And uh, that was being discussed and then Lauten and Gandhi said, no, it is cowardly to do that. We are not against the white people. We want our people to gay, be equal, that's all. You know, we are only asking for equality. We are not asking them to lose their jobs or anything like that. So I will explain to them, Gandhi said. But they, he got down during the day. He was lynched. He was kicked. He was, his turban was torn. And blood started oozing from his forehead. At that time, a Mrs. Alexander, who was passing by, stopped and said, What is this? This is Gandhi, a big lawyer and uh, you are uh, lynching him. So she opened her parasol and she went and stood in front of Gandhi, between the boys and the Gandhi. And they knew that she was the wife of the police in superintendent, white woman, and they all ran away. She took him to his friend Parsi Rustumji's house. And there, while having food, another group of white people gathered and said, give us Gandhi or we'll burn this house down. That is when Gandhi agreed to a suggestion that he will cover his face, wear the police officer's uniform, and go away by the side door. My question, I talk to students always, is the same man takes two opposite decisions for the same problem on the same day. How come? Okay, I know it's too late in the evening, uh, it's too much to... Uh, talk about it, but you know some children tell me because he had a bad experience coming down from the ship when he wanted to be cautious But some also tell me that you know when they, when you know that you cannot win in a violent situation It is better to use some other strategy and avoid the violence You know you can't be foolhardy and say I'm going to win a pack of lions you know and go and fight lions. You have to use strategies to avoid violence. Okay? And don't stand on your uh, ego and uh, uh, standing, etc. Okay? So Gandhi um, was coming to Madras in 1946 the superintendent of the Central Railway Station, Mr. Sirajuddin, I think his name was Sirajuddin or Jalaluddin or something like that, sent a telegram to Gandhi in Kolkata saying, please don't come and get down in Central Station because if you come, there will be huge crowd in the Central Station and other passengers will be inconvenienced. There will be crowds coming to welcome you. So, I suggest you get down in Ambur and we will come and receive you there. This is what the 
Central Station Superintendent sends a telegram to Gandhi. Gandhi says, does one better. He comes two days earlier. But word travels and people come running. There is Sri Rajagopalachari. There is Kalki Krishnamurti, the one with the glasses. And they all run to Ambur. And uh, this was his silent day. Every 22nd of uh, the month after 1944, he was keeping silent because that was the date uh, Kasturba died. So he would keep silent. It was his silent day. He is standing silent. He has not spoken a single word. And all the journalists who are gathered there are writing a big report. You can see that. He didn't say a word. He comes to Hindi Prachar Sabha and uh, they say, we are, uh, Bapu, we are not having any public meeting for you today. Public are not allowed because it's your silent day and we didn't know you were coming also. So you can rest today. Um, tomorrow we can have the uh, public can be allowed for the meeting. He writes, silent, no, silent day, no, he writes on a piece of paper and says, please allow the public for this evening's prayer meet. 12,000 people landed up in two hours time. No WhatsApp, no cell phone, no uh, email, no nothing. 12,000 people landed up in two hours notice. And the crowd was up to Tanika Chalam Street in Tinagar from Hindi Prachar Sabha. And all he did was open his hand, his speech. That was his speech. So somebody else translates it, saying, five points all Indians must remember. Number one, education. Education of girls and education means critical thinking and questioning. Number two, stay away from intoxication. Intoxication can come from alcohol, excess use of alcohol, excess use of anything is intoxication. Even wanting more and more and more is intoxication. Greed is intoxication. Stay away from intoxication. Number three, use as much as possible village-made, handmade, nature-friendly products. Number four, give respect to mother tongue. Number five, truth and non-violence. Now, you can say what truth and non-violence in this day and age. You are talking about truth and non-violence. We see violence all around us. And you are saying truth and non-violence. How does it, is it, does it have any relevance today? It's a question, isn't it? The idea is, truth is dynamic, it's not static. Truth can change. It can change from today to tomorrow with more information. If you, you can change your opinion. You can constantly evolve. This is what Gandhi kept on saying. Take my latest statement as what I believe in today. Don't take something I said in 1919 and quote, you know, that is what is happening now. People quote him against Gandhi because from some, something he had said somewhere earlier. He said, I am willing to change. Constantly I am willing to change my opinion. Whatever I believe as truth, I am willing to change. So truth and non-violence for him were a composite word. They were not two different words. They were a composite word. Non-violence is trying to understand the other person's truth. If you even make an attempt to try and understand the other person's truth, then you have made it. Okay, now I think I should stop talking. Let's listen to some music because this was a man who travelled alone. He was a lone man leading India into something so unique. So, Ekla Chalore, uh, I'd request... Um, oh, she's singing, Ekla Chalore. 
She will sing Ekla Chalore. Um, I asked Sai Jochna, I asked Prem Kumar, Prem Nath, her teacher, to ask Sai Jochna to learn Ekla Chalore and sing it. Okay. This is a challenge they've taken like that. And uh, it's amazing that young people are open to challenges and doing it. And suddenly I say something and they are taking it up. Fantastic. Ingerke, Shruti Ingerke. Jodi tor dak shune kyu na ashe to be ekla cholor. Jodi tor dak shune kyu na ashe to be ekla cholor. To be ekla cholo, ekla cholo, ekla cholo, ekla cholor. To be ekla cholo, ekla cholo, ekla cholo, ekla cholor. Jodi tor dak shune kyu na. Jodi 
Gandhi, the way he changes his costuming, he was not a poor man. This is what a lot of people think, that he was a born a poor man. No, he was born into quite a well-to-do family. As you can see, his father was the Divan. Uh, it was voluntary poverty that he embraced. He was not a poor man as a lot of students seem to think. Uh, when I go to schools, they think he was a poor man and uh, he had a back ba bad bag, that's why he was holding a stick. All these are uh, myths, you know. He was a very, very fit person. I'm going to uh, reduce my storytelling. Look at this picture. There are stripes on that picture, isn't it? How do you think it has come? Somebody has folded that picture into one strip, isn't it? The people in this picture are Gandhi on the left and uh, Herman Kallenbach on the right and their secretary, Gandhi's secretary, Sonia Schlichen, in the middle. Now, in 1914, Gandhi decided that he wanted to go back to India and uh, Kallenbach wanted to go with him to India. Uh, but uh, at that time, you know, World War I and uh, the ship would go from Durban to London and then only come to India. In London, he knew that he might not get a visa to come to India. He might be arrested as an um, enemy because he, was, he had a German passport, Kallenbach. So he might be arrested. So when the ship went to London, Kallenbach did not get a visa to come to India. Gandhi and his wife had to uh, come on their own. And uh, he, you know what he had done? Because this picture was the most cherished picture. He was a very, very rich man. He bought 1,100 uh, acres of land for Gandhi to create Tolstoy Farm in South Africa. He was a very rich architect, Jewish man. He... Uh, 
feared that he might be arrested in London. And what does he do? He opens the shirt collar and folds this picture into one strip and puts it inside and sews it up. Because this is the only thing he treasured. So the prison authorities never discovered this picture. And it is in a museum in Haifa in Israel now. Uh, his niece uh, has created a small museum for Kallenbach and it is in Haifa in Israel now. So, small in incidences that tell you uh, how human all these are. So when they come to India, this is the costume they were wearing. And uh, see the um, headgear is black, a black cap. And then it becomes white when he goes to meet Tagore in Shantini Ketan. And then in Madurai, he discards the upper cloth. And sound. On the outskirts of the village. to tell you about the salt march you all know about it there are stories every day uh, of salt march I'm not going to go into that but this march influenced this man to do a march in 1963 I'm sure you can recognize him Martin Luther King in America 1963 he kept on telling his followers remember Gandhi you throw one stone they will come at us with machine guns you know they will uh, um, they have the power the only power we have as Gandhi had is nonviolence so we are not going to retaliate remember Gandhi remember Gandhi he kept on telling his followers and that resulted in a black man in the White House you know because of that March and then um, I heard about Phil Horst Gandhi carnival in Brazil in a place called Bahia, uh, a festival called Philhos de Gandhi takes place. These were dock workers who heard about Gandhi in the 1930s. And when they heard he had been assassinated in 1948, they decided to commemorate his memory with a festival every year called Philhos de Gandhi, which means children of Gandhi. They sing uh, songs of peace and nonviolence and they uh, celebrate him. Can you believe it? In Brazil, South America. So it is the um, the the wrapping that you have, you know, of your nonviolence. It is the clothing that he was giving as a big message. And so I requested um, uh, this girl to I forget your name. Nanda Prakash, how can I forget? Nanda, Nanda is going to sing Jeannie Chadaria. What a challenge for a young girl, but she has risen up to this challenge, okay? Chadariya jini re jini Chadariya jini re jini
musicians of Mahatma Gandhi and when Gandhi was uh, taken ill in Yervada jail uh, when uh, his appendix burst and they had to do a surgery on him um, and um, uh, he uh, the power went off and they had to do surgery on uh, lantern you know um, just um, um, anyway uh, when he was recovering uh, this great musician called Dilip Kumar Roy came to see Gandhi and he said, uh, can I sing for you, he asked and uh, very hesitatingly he told Gandhi, I know that you are not into music and art and all that, but I want to sing for you and uh, Gandhi is said to have told him, me against music, you know, when I know that music uh, carries religion and faith uh, in it, how can I be against music and uh, he sang um, uh, Chakar Rakoji and things like that which uh, really elevated music there but I'm going to play just a short one of how M.S. Sublakshmi and Dilip Kumar Roy sang together Vande Mataram. Vande Mataram Oh, 
I'll conclude with the last uh, day of Gandhi and then all of you are going to sing with us. Okay? Every one of you is going to sing with us. Before going, Namaskaram, good evening. Before going into the final performance, I would like to introduce the uh, young artist, uh, very young artist, Bhagalakshmi Amma on the flute. <laughs> on the vocal, Hari Prasad. Mridangam, Shri Krishna and music students Uruganti Sai Jyotsna and Nanda Prakash and another correction I am not yet a music teacher uh, for both of them uh, the Guru is uh, Shri Vats. thank you thank you for Devika Akka for the wonderful opportunity for Rukmini Devi Natya Kshetra it's every performance for us is learning experience. Thank you all. The explosion was from a bomb thrown by a Hindu refugee to kill Gandhi. Gandhi remained unruffled. <laughs> सुनो 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 सब सुनो कुछ नहीं हुआ है चलिए शांत रहिए relying on god he refused to accept any kind of human protection on friday january 30th gandhi asked for pending letters i must reply to them today for tomorrow i may never be During his conversation with Sardar Patel at 4.30, Gandhi had his usual evening meal. It was getting near prayer time. I hate being late, Gandhi averred, and rose to go to the prayer ground. At the sunset hour, with thoughts of prayer in his mind, Gandhi walked along to seek communion with God, who had illumined his path all through life till his progress was interrupted. The perverse assassin of the ages came with his unholy design and accomplished the foul deed. Nathuram Godse lodged a hot lead in the soft flesh of the man who had known no enemy. Choked with emotion, Jawaharlal Nehru said, The light has gone out of our lives and there is darkness everywhere. Our beloved leader, Bapu as we called him, the father of the nation, is no more. The light has gone out, I said, and yet I was wrong, for the light that shone in this country was no ordinary light. The light that has illumined this country for these many years will illumine this country for many more years. The United Nations organization lured its flag 
Peoples of all races felt as one human family in mourning. Now, um, we need to celebrate Gandhi, not mourn him, because it's he who told us there is dignity in work and no one should ever think that he's poor or, you know, helpless. Nobody should be helpless. Our ten fingers or our wealth. So let's all sing that together. Come, take this mic. Come and stand here and sing. Um, Sinna 
வளர்மதி ராகவிராஜ் நிரஞ்சனி பிரபு மதுமதி 